Hello, welcome back to Podcast Extra with myself, Jess Percival, and the wonderful Tim Cameron Kitchen. Today, we are going to be talking about Black Friday marketing, which should be a lot of fun. Are you excited, Tim? I'm extremely excited. Black Friday is one of those things every year, everyone says to each other, can't believe it came around yeah. so soon. But we're actually on it this year. We are very well We are. Prepared. We are. And that's why we're doing a Black Friday stream in... August is still August. Yes, it's flying by this month. Absolutely flying by. Um, but yeah, that's why we're, we're wanting to get you started now, getting you in the loop so that you know what you need to do to actually have a decent Black Friday marketing extravaganza. Um, we're going to talk you through some key principles that we think you should have in your campaign, some goals you should set, as well as how you can use your competitors to your advantage and some different Black Friday strategies that you can use. So, Tim, do you want to kick us off with some of the important key principles for Black Friday marketing? Let's do it. So Black Friday is how you implement it is going to be dependent on your business and your audience. Obviously, it look, will look quite different for B2B software companies or service companies than it will for B2C e-commerce companies. However, what we're going to share today is a whole bunch of sort of ideas and things that we've observed working well with our clients or out there in the big wide world. So the value, as always, is looking at these principles and saying, how can I apply that? How can I be creative and do something that my industry may not have seen before? How can I take a lesson learned from, you know, a, a, a cosmetics beauty brand and apply that to my funeral care business, right? It's in there if you think it hard really enough. Is. No, it really <laughs> is. And I think um, this is for any industry. It isn't just for e-commerce. I think people can fall into that trap. And some of the things we're going to talk about today, you'll see it doesn't always have to be about discounts. There's other ways that you can offer value and make sure that people are getting a good deal. Because that's really what Black Friday is, is about. Yeah. It's not necessarily about who can give the biggest discount, although I think Tim will get onto it in, in a moment. But there are people that are concerned about that. But it really is about getting the most, the most value out of this. For if I was going to be cynical, I would say that Black Friday is a... A, a, a coordinated event to maximize revenue through the psychological manipulation of your target audience, right? Through You're pressing <laughs> their, their sort of emotive drives in order to get them to do things that they may not otherwise do. So on that topic, um, one of the key principles or, or the, the first key principle, I think, is don't compromise your business's position and your values just because it's Black Friday. No one is telling you that you have to slash your prices 60%. And for a lot of businesses, that will be a terrible idea. So start from your business's values and your positioning first. And that's the filter that you look at everything else through. Um, I would say another of the comments looking at the um, looking at some of the data and Statista has some fantastic data around Black Friday shopping trends over time is that um, having said you don't need to run huge offers, if you're going to be promoting Black Friday heavily, make sure that your offers are good enough, right? The leading UK reason for shoppers no longer shopping on Black Friday is that the deals aren't good enough. Um, so you need to overcome that inertia and skepticism. What we mean here is that if you're thinking that, hey, it's Black Friday, we're just going to say 5% off discount um, and we're going to expect our sales to explode, it's not going to happen at all. Um, so we need to make sure that our offers, whether these are discounts or whether they're freebies or any of the other devices that we'll talk about later, are compelling enough to actually feel like Black Friday. Um, the other thing I would say is that there's a bit of a hack here that you'll notice lots of stores using, which is to limit quantity, limit availability. If you want to drive people into a frenzy, you have a maximum perceived value offer with a limited quantity of availability. That creates the frenzy, right? This is why people are, you know, ripping out their grandmother's spines to use as a spear to kill their neighbors in the Walmart dash because there's... <laughs> 15 150 inch TVs for $200, not 20,000. If there was 20,000, you wouldn't need to bludgeon your shopping mates with an ax to get them because there's such quantity there that you don't need to fight for it. So if you really want to create a frenzy, having a limited range 
of available uh, discounts or offers, um, then it can help. And also, it does actually mean that you're limiting your downside. You're not having to give away huge amounts of inventory or discount. Uh, Jess, anything to add on that? Yeah, I just think that um, for the people who don't want to cause a frenzy um, and, and kind of don't want to limit their quantity, there is definitely a way that you can still take advantage of this. I think Gymshark are absolutely masters of the Black Friday sale, like the way that they build so much buzz around said sale, you know, and it's a great way to get more people on their email list because you're signing up for the Black Friday drops because you can only access that landing page if you get the emails, you get like early access or like if you're like me and you're just super forgetful, like it's nice to have that email and have that link that will just be like, here's where you need to be. Here's the time. Here you go. So and it makes you feel like you're like part of something special. Yeah. Like, I don't know when I log in to, <laughs> to Gymshark on Black Friday, it's like I feel like I can feel the other people around me on the website. I think I'm just strange. Um, but like I get genuinely hyped for it. And if I'm honest, I won't buy Gymshark at full price. I would rather wait until the Black Friday sale because I know I'm going to get a fantastic deal on the stuff that I want. You don't always get the stuff that you want. But I think that's another way that you can do it. If you don't want to limit stuff, you can just turn it into kind of an event. And yeah. they really are like... I would say like one of the leaders in just doing fantastic Black Friday events um, without kind of, I don't feel like they compromise on, you know, their positioning. And I don't think as well, it's a lot of like older things. This is something that Black Friday is fantastic for getting rid of older stock, getting yeah. rid of the colors of stuff that you've got lying around that you just want gone because people like me who don't want to pay full price for Gymshark. I also know that I kind of just get what I get. <laughs> and I'm going to get like the other stuff that most people don't like. And I'm kind of aware of that. And I kind of just accept it. I'm not saying the average consumer is like that, but um, it's a really great opportunity to get rid of some of that, some of that stock that's been like hanging around. That's why I always see you out in your triple XL neon pink hoodie. <laughs> you say that, you say that, but yeah, it's practically, <laughs> <laughs> practically going you. that way. I see. You. <laughs> well, I mean, and and that's a good point. Like you, you did mention there that you wouldn't pay full price for, for Gymshark. And I think that's the danger. And that's something that retailers are worried about. There was a study last year by BDO uh, predicting that the growth in Black Friday sales was actually just pulling forward Christmas shopping and potentially cannibalizing some of that Christmas shopping, which would be much more lucrative if it wasn't sold at heavy discount because Christmas shopping doesn't tend to have huge discounts, whereas Black Friday often does. So I think I do think that retailers ha and, and any business has to be quite strategic here and not not get in a panic yourself and think that, well, unless we're offering like 90% off our top selling items, you know, this isn't this isn't going to work. Like Jess said, you can use this as an opportunity to shift old stock. There are other um sort of incentives which we'll talk about later which you can be offering that isn't just hey you know 60 percent off site wide because that is just pure margin erosion you're not actually getting anything for that you are just losing um whereas there are ways to use this to either build an email list or you know by offering gift vouchers or gifts with purchase you can incentivize full price sales or by offering uh you know discounts above certain values you can increase your average order value so there are ways of being clever but still offering a deal which people find really compelling Absolutely. You made a great comment about um, gift cards there. Before, before we move on to that, we had a message um, on our live stream asking about like how you can take advantage of affiliate marketing during mm. Black Friday. And my main advice would just be to make sure that you're, if you are reaching out to blogs and websites, make sure you're kind of niching down. Like nobody wants to try and hunt through a world of Black Friday deals on a blog they've barely ever heard of that's just including every single website that's offering a black friday deal but i know around this time i get a lot of well not around this time but around black friday time i get a lot of emails being like here's some companies that are doing great black friday events so that's the kind of places that you want to land and that's the kind of recommendations that you want to be getting in my opinion i don't know if you have anything to add to that tim yeah, well, we'll talk later about how you can start ranking some of your category pages, you know, way, way, way before Black Friday. I mean, to be fair, in most markets, it's probably a bit too late anyway, if you're hoping to target this um, this year. But you notice most of the large e-commerce players have 
static Black Friday pages, which they're optimizing for all year round. They might be building links to these all year round and it'd be the same for affiliates. Like if you're in a gaming niche, for example, Black Friday gaming pages, you want ranking all year round. You know that that traffic spike is gonna be a massive spike on Black Friday. By Cyber Monday, it's gonna be gone but you're building that page in anticipation of that traffic, knowing that search volumes are going to be there because people are searching. The search volume is, is, is really good for Black Friday and people are looking for deals. They're not just uh, visiting the brands and the sites that they are already familiar with. They are looking for new experiences and new deals, and that's a great sort of customer acquisition uh, channel. Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to touch on gift cards because – Free gift with purchase and gift cards are a way that we've seen some brands that are maybe uh, luxury and don't want to damage their price positioning by offering steep discounts. And I think there are some really strategic ways that you can use this. So if you're offering a free gift with purchase, for example, this could be, you know, I'm thinking of businesses that have consumables, whether that's like, you know, cosmetics or uh, you know, food and drink or supplements, things like this. If you're giving away a consumable gift with another purchase and you know that that is a sort of gateway product that's going to lead to someone repurchasing and maybe subscribing, this is just a marketing expense. You don't have to be losing from this. That that free gift can actually bring you, uh, you know, an ongoing customer. Um, you might also think about shifting, like Jess said, old stock or uh, aging inventory that you don't think you're going to be able to sell any other way. You might be offering gifts of, you know, colorways or sizes that you, you know, you're, you're going to be struggling to get rid of. So I think there are some st strategic ways you can offer free gift with purchase. But I also wanted to talk about gift vouchers because <clears throat> people think of gift vouchers and cash in a very similar way but actually they're dramatically different for a business. And they're dramatically different for a business because of breakage. Now, breakage is the percentage of gift cards that never get redeemed. And you can be offering gift cards as a bonus for Black Friday purchases more profitably usually than you can be offering you know, money off. Let's say, let's just take num uh, some numbers. This water bottle, Let's say this is a hundred pounds and you're thinking about, do I offer 50 pounds off it or do I offer a free 50 pound gift card with it? Well, if I offer a free 50 pound gift card, firstly, I'm getting probably 70% gross margin on that. So actually already that 50 pound gift card isn't costing me 50 pounds in lost profit. It's only costing me whatever, 30 pounds. But then I've also got breakage and breakage is the number of gift cards that are never claimed. So between usually between two and 4% of gift cards are never claimed, which might not sound like a lot, but actually it can go up to 10% in some spaces. And in some spaces it can be even more. You've also got uh, the delay between people getting a gift card and actually spending it. Now, I think uh, there was some data from uh, Patronix where 43% of gift cards aren't spent after 180 days. So that's cash flow that you've had, which you can invest in your business or do whatever you want with, which you've had for 180 days. So fantastic. You'd rather have that. Um, and then, of course, you've got overspend, right? If someone gave you a £50 gift card on this, well, you're going to be spending more than that you know, whoever you give that to is going to be spending more than that if the product, if that's not the minimum product price. So first data, um, th there's a whole bunch of different data points on how much gift card overspend typically is. First data had some, uh, some data from 2018 where they estimated $59 average overspend. Uh, Blackhawk Network quoted uh, that uh, gift card uh, overspend was an average of 90%, meaning people on average spent almost double. Uh, so the gift card plus another 90%. So gift cards are very different to offering discounts, even though from a consumer's point of view, they may feel quite similar. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, I think that's that's fantastic. Another way that you can, t can kind of take advantage of Black Friday without necessarily hurting your margins is um, with loyalty points. If you're a business that runs loyalty points, then you can do like double, triple points over Black Friday. And if you're like, oh, this doesn't, um, this doesn't apply to my business. Well, I know someone whose mum paid for her funeral already because she wanted the loyalty points for, I think it was like with the co-op or with Tesco or someone, and she wanted those points now. So she paid for it. And, you know, so this extends to so many different industries. And I think, you know, 
it's the same thing again as with the gift cards as people are likely to spend more because they're like oh I've already got my points like I might as well just spend a bit more like you know it's free money it's girl math like you can spend you know it doesn't matter and so I think um yeah Tim's learned a new word today um (laughs) but you know people will spend more and really you're you're not going to be damaging your margins and you can strengthen your your loyalty scheme so people aren't signed up they're definitely going to sign up for your scheme when you can then you know give them double points then you can retarget them Mm. with the stuff that they've brought um and make sure you you know you're really segmenting that audience down so there's definitely some opportunities there too yeah one pound of discount is one pound off your bottom line one pound in loyalty points or dis or voucher code or whatever is probably 20p off your bottom line once it all, all is said and done so it's totally different but girl math can work in your favor it can it can indeed um another topic that i wanted to touch on quickly is for anybody who has like november isn't a peak time for you like maybe you're you sell something really seasonal that people just aren't interested in november and either you can use black friday as an opportunity to get some extra sales out of a season that you wouldn't normally sell a lot or you can flip the whole thing on its head and do Black Friday at a different part of the year and just big it up. So I remember, Tim, we had a conversation with one of our clients who sells lawn care stuff. And we made a joke about doing like Green Friday because, you know, he's not selling much lawn care towards the end of the year. But he could do a discount or offer something extra in the peak of the year or just before that peak to kind of get people hyped. And I know not on the high street did like Pink Friday where they were advertising that they were having sales on the same day that the Barbie movie came out just so that they could like trend hack, trend yeah. news jack, that's the word yeah. I think, um, and kind of get in on that. Um, and finally on that one as well, you can choose to not participate and make you not participating an event in itself. So I think DCM, um, you know, they took like an anti-Black Friday stance and they were like, we don't encourage impulse purchasing. We encourage like considered purchases. But also if you're a business like a HelloFresh comes to mind where they offer massive discounts all throughout the year, that can be your positioning of we're not taking part in Black Friday because we give you a great deal deal all year round. So really the possibilities are actually endless here. They really are endless, no matter what kind of business you you run or the values you want to uphold. Like there's so many opportunities. Agreed. Agreed. There's also been a trend fairly recently of companies pulling forward their Black Friday events. So not wanting to wait until Black Friday because then you're fighting out with everyone who's running Black Friday. Um, I remember, I can't think of the name. I remember a company who was, they did Black july uh mm. forever 20 run one they run black friday in july because they wanted to get ahead of that and they can sort of tap into some of the the, the emotion that people have around black friday but you know when the calendar is clear when people aren't expecting a discount so you can be exactly. playful with this this is just this is just a tool that you can use however you want and uh, figure out how to do it that works with your customers and, and your business and your positioning absolutely Tim, what would you do about setting goals for Black Friday? Because, of course, everybody's going to be like, we just want to sell and make money. But that's too much of a broad goal. What would you suggest for anybody who's wanting to run a Black Friday campaign? Or maybe they've run one in the past and they just felt like they couldn't track it. What are some goals that you would suggest they set? Well, I think that there's five categories, right? You can either use it for new customer acquisition. So this would be, how do you get on the radar of people who've never bought from you before? So this may be that you're you know, advertising on social, you're doing some influencer stuff, you're offering discounts, you're offering um, some sort of offer on your Tripwire products that you know you're gonna get more customers from. You've got an opportunity to shift old stock would be the second thing. And that's, I guess that's kind of what initially Black Friday was about. It was about retailers getting rid of old stock, clearing out their inventory ready for Christmas. So they had space for all the, the Christmas stuff coming in. Um, but you can also use it for re-engaging old customers too. So what offers can you run to reactivate customers who've maybe stopped purchasing from you, knowing that if you've got their email list, for example, or their phone numbers for SMS, you're not actually going to have to invest much marketing spend to acquire that customer back. So maybe you can reinvest some of that customer acquisition cost into 
giving them some sort of an incentive to come back. Um, another good use of Black Friday can just be to drive traffic to your website so you can start uh, sort of training your remarketing and retargeting pixels so that you can be running ads in the run up to Christmas knowing that these people are interested in your types of products. Um, and then sort of in the same vein is the email listing that you mentioned right at the start, Jess. And I think having Black Friday focused landing pages and starting to collect Black Friday email addresses way before the day itself, because people are going to get exclusive access and early access to deals makes a lot of sense. And then of course, you've got those email addresses that you can be running your Christmas promos to, and then the sort of post Christmas sale as well. Um, if, if that's the sort of thing that you run. So Black Friday doesn't just have to be about, you know, how can we shift as much stock at massive discount? It doesn't even just have to be about pure sales. If you need to focus on customer acquisition, inventory turning, uh, re-engagement of old customers, remarketing and retargeting and building email lists, you can also design your Black Friday campaigns around those goals too. Yes, absolutely. There's so much you can do. And yeah, it doesn't have to just be about shifting old stock or giving the biggest discounts, there's so many different goals you can have. So let's jump into strategies, which are very, very exciting. We've got a few that you can use with the first one being countdown deals. Now I'm a sucker for a countdown deal. <laughs> Essentially what they do, Amazon are amazing at this, but throughout the day or throughout a certain week or something, Amazon do this for their prime day, but they also do it during Black Friday is that certain items won't be on sale until a certain time of day. Um, and the when you go on the website, there will actually be literal clocks counting down, being like, in an hour, this is going on sale, or this will stop being on sale in 10 minutes, you know, all these different things. And not only does this mean that you're creating that sense of urgency, but it also keeps people coming back because they're unlikely, especially on a website like Amazon, they're unlikely to be buying just one thing. They're going to want a bunch of different things. And this is a fantastic way to like get people coming back. Now, if you're something like a lead generation business, let's say, and you create like the greatest ebooks or you create some like fantastic video content, you can do the same kind of thing and just wait for different things to be unlocked. Like Dale um, sent me a course recently which um, they've released half the course for free, but they'll be releasing the other half on the 1st of September. So once you're invested, you know, you're halfway through and you're going to want to come back and it kind of, you're waiting, it feels more like an event. So even mm -hmm. if you're not e-commerce, you can still do these countdowns, still get people hyped for like Black Friday stuff and you could just be giving away free information um, or heavily discounting some stuff, but you can absolutely do some countdowns on this. So, yeah. I love that idea of keeping co people coming back to the to the site over and over throughout the day. I remember, I mean, that's how you really turn this thing into an event for your customers, isn't it? My first experience of Black Friday must have been 2009 or th 2010, and it was Amazon, and you log into the app, and you see, like, they've got discounts by category, and these things are coming online in however many hours, and you know, some crazy people had their timers set up for, like, I need to go back on at this sort of time. Not me. Um, but uh, some people do. Um, and, you know, it, it just, it turns it from like, oh, I need to check out this website on this day to, okay, I need to be checking out this website every hour or at these times throughout the day. And that's oh, it's such a much more hooky implementation. Yeah, it's that. so, so clever. I'm so sorry about my doorbell. Is that your doorbell? <laughs> I thought Ooh. I turned it off. Yeah, I thought doorbell I Doorbell of the apocalypse. Wow. Indeed, sorry. Um, <laughs> moving swiftly on. So we've already talked a little bit about this, but Black Friday is fantastic for lead capture. So for instance, handing over an email in exchange for early access to deals, which, you know, there's plenty of... Um, plenty of websites that will build up that hype and say, you know, you don't want to miss out. But then there's also kind of like members only deals. If you want to go even further, maybe some items or some stuff will only be available to people who have registered and have put their email in. So there's really this kind of, yeah, this, this sort of, don't know how to describe it, but you can... <laughs> Brain just totally left the chat, unfortunately. <laughs> but yes, email in exchange for early access is fab. Yeah. It's a great opportunity to get that that list ready for Christmas. A big way to build anticipation as well. Don't forget the run up. You might want to tease some of the deals that are going to be coming out. Make sure people are anticipating your Black Friday email on the day. And they're not just, oh, you know, what have I got? Because it might just end up in the promo tab. What you want instead is you want people 
actively looking for it when the day comes because they know that something they're going to be getting something exciting. Jess, as a uh, social media person, indeed, <laughs> I, make, I feel like I make myself like twenty years older when I am <laughs> sort of like Gen Z, uh, social child. <laughs> um, <laughs> talk to us about hashtags. How can brands use hashtags on Black Friday beyond beyond the obvious hashtag Black Friday? Yeah, that is like the biggest mistake you can make. If anybody's searching for hashtag Black Friday, I have some questions for them because you're just going to get a feed of everything ever, aren't you? Every single business that is using that hashtag you're going to see, which I suppose for some people, they're just like, maybe they want to get inspired. Maybe they do want to see everything. But realistically, you should be taking part in more niche hashtags. For instance, an example here is like vegan Black Friday, fitness Black Friday, um, yeah, any other Animal. business types, apparently, I can't think of right now. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, but any, literally anything that you sell, you can then make a hashtag. And even if there isn't a hashtag already, make one. Other people will jump on the bandwagon, you know. And you can also encourage people to use that hashtag if they're, like, wanting to flex their purchases. Like, I know loads of people want to be like, oops, look how much I freaking just brought on Black Friday. Or, like, look at the amazing deals I just got. Like, if I get a good deal on stuff, I do not shut up about it to the point that I'm annoying, you know? So just remind people to use those hashtags and get excited. Like I can imagine Gymshark have their own hashtag for Black mm. Friday, you know? Like, I think that's that's a really great opportunity. There's also new opportunities coming up as well. For instance, like shoppable um, posts on Instagram or even more popular, like shoppable videos on TikTok. Like sometimes my TikTok feels like video shopping feed. Like it's just body suits and makeup and lipstick and all these things that I've like watched the video for more than five seconds and now they're just pushing them all to me but if I do see somebody using a product I like I immediately hit that button to see you know what the product is how much it is and it's on usually good brands like one recent one was a Clinique lipstick which was like 22 quid for me I was like nope let's go and find a dupe but that is has been super super popular um, you know, and the dupe that I brought was from Elf and they'd said like, oh, TikTok has spoken. Here's this product, you know. So there's and that's another way if you're doing great deals, you can either post, you know, from your own platforms, your own channels, or you can work with influencers to promote that stuff leading up to the event or just on that day have like a total brand blast of just every influencer mm. that you've hired posting about your discounts and your products there's definitely yeah tiktok i think is really wanting to become a shopping platform and it has been for a while you know with people saying tiktok made me buy even before people could add these links these shopping links and people i think a lot of young people love that they can get affiliate commission too through this so there's there's a huge opportunity there if you haven't sort of hacked into that tiktok um shop space if you're an e-commerce business definitely yeah. look into it for sure Oh, the novelty of early affiliate commission. Just, oh. Indeed. A pound of affiliate income feels like 100 pounds of real world. <laughs> um, so let's talk about some of the things that businesses can start doing to prep them. Um, I think making sure you've got your ads and your landing pages and stuff set up ahead of time. Sometimes it can be a good idea to even start running your ads before time, particularly if something in something like search where the ad traffic might be very cheap significantly before um, Black Friday. But if you're driving people, people to a landing page and you've got enough on that landing page where you've got a good conversion to email sign up, then that might not be bad value because it's going to be a lot cheaper getting that person on your Black Friday landing page if you've got their email address ahead of Black Friday than fighting it out on the day itself when these CPCs are going to be sky high. So don't be afraid to start prepping and priming the pump a little bit early. Absolutely. And Performance Max needs a little bit more time to kind of warm up and get ready if you're running Google Ads. Like it needs that time to learn. So in order to give it that time to learn, without kind of having to like wait till the last day and just hope things work out, then you can drive people to a landing page and then just kind of mix up your creative on the day um, to sort of drive those last few conversions. But really this is more about getting people hyped about your sale than actually getting them in through that ad on the day. Yes, totally agree. I just wanted to share, we talked a little bit earlier about um, 
landing pages and rankings. And I just wanted to share my screen quick. So for those who are listening rather than watching, um, this is just an example of how brands are preparing for some of the Black Friday searches that they're going to be getting. So if you search for, for example, men's clothes, Black Friday deals, um, you can see that most uh, or a lot of large retailers already have product category pages ranking for these phrases. And these are static pages, right? Years ago, you used to get Black Friday pages and they'd be hidden for the rest of the year and then they'd sort of reveal them and it would be a new page each year. Whereas now most of these e-commerce stores are savvy enough that they just keep a static page uh, optimized for Black Friday. So you can see exactly what you would expect. We've got some uh, text copy on all of these at the top or bottom of the category page. And then we've got a few products and some of these are just, you know, discount or clearance products that they just stick to keep these pages um, open. But I'm just on the Adidas, uh, on the Adidas site here on adidas.co.uk in the UK. And they've got category pages optimized for Black Friday for I'm going to say most of their men's clothing categories, yeah, so Black Friday there. hoodies, Black Friday football shoes, Black Friday, whatever, Black Friday coats. Like this is an entire e-commerce SEO strategy um, is optimizing some category pages for Black Friday terms. So a couple of things to think about. Firstly here, if you're going to be doing this, you've got to recognize that obviously the, it goes without saying, but the traffic is going to be very transient, right? This isn't going to be year round traffic. So I think you need to evaluate whether you're actually going to be able to compete for the phrases that you're targeting. If you're a new startup and you're targeting, you know, Black Friday makeup deals, for example, you probably don't have a chance there. So what you don't want to do is spend ages and ages building out these category pages and adding loads of content, knowing that you're going to be on page three and, you know, you can optimize for all year, but then you've missed a chance and it's been two days and you've got no traffic. So I think play this game if you know that you can win. But if you do think that you can win, then worth building out these pages ahead of time, building some links to them as well. Um, so they've got some good authority and uh, and then reap the rewards and then, Right. See you next year. Black Friday category pages. But this is, you know, this is how the major retailers are playing this. They're not waiting, waking up on Black Friday and saying, right, what can we rank? This is a committed strategy that they're working on all year. And they have these pages that are existing all year round. Absolutely. Yeah. Black Friday is all about being very prepared and not just thinking, oh my gosh, it's Black Friday. We need to do something like because you need to understand what your goals are. You need to understand how your audience behave and the things that they, you know, that they care about and what's best to kind of hit them and get their attention. Um, and it's important to remember as well that the majority of your shopping around 73% will actually be on mobile. So make sure your pages are optimized for mobile. It's not enough anymore just to have responsive pages that you need to be thinking about the consumer experience and how it actually looks on mobile because we see so many mobile websites where everything's just squished up and yes, things kind of go smaller, but actually you know, even though it's responsive, the experience is just very, very poor. Um, and another thing as well is make sure that your servers are ready because there's so many websites that crash on Black Friday because they've, they're have they going to have the best deals and they just haven't prepared for it. So if you speak to your developers, make sure that your website is, is very much ready. And don't pretend that your website went down because that's the most embarrassing thing a business can do. And we will catch you out, trust me. So don't pretend that your website went down because of an influx of people. Just, just don't. I was gonna say do it. <laughs> no, don't. It's, it's too conflicting. A person, an agent of chaos in Tim. Yes. And a a neutral person in me <laughs> who's saying don't do that. And Tim's like, go, go for it. If it builds type, it builds type. Yeah. Um, I, I, Man yeah. <laughs> Manipulate. <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> On that note, thank you so much for watching or listening. If you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on um, our podcast platforms. And of course, if you haven't already, request a marketing review at exposureninjet.com slash review. You'll get a 15 to 20 minute video reviewing all your marketing and your website absolutely for free from one of our marketing consultants. Yes, we just had a question in the chat. Oh. 
we're going to end on this great question from Carl for a company without yeah. any focus and maybe even want to actively avoid adding to the noise on Black Friday. Is there any value to taking an anti Black Friday marketing campaign in the run up? Yes, you sell what you've got. If you don't like Black Friday, then you sell against the rampant consumerism, the blatant FOMO and the manipulation of the through the marketing of these evil companies. Absolutely. Sell what you've got. Use Black Friday as a tool. It's a talking point. It's something to trend jack, like Jess said. So sell against it if you don't believe in it and sell for it if you do believe in it. Absolutely. If you're like, let's say, an ethical business who, you know, sells really high quality products because you're sort of anti-consumerism, but not anti-consumerism enough to not have a business, um, then, you know, it's a great opportunity to really push and say, look, make considered choices and you know buy things that are going to stick around don't buy a load of rubbish that you you're not going to use after a year make good choices this is the opportunity to do that instead of spending all your money on loads of little things buy something that will last so yeah there's plenty of opportunities to do kind of like anti-black friday and really cut through the noise hope that was helpful that's all we've got time for today thank you so much for watching we'll be back next week talking about all the marketing news again we just wanted to give you something a little bit different today yeah see you next week bye